When the pimp's in the crib, ma Drop it like it's hot Drop it like it's hot Drop it like it's hot When the pigs try to get at you Park it like it's hot Park it like it's hot Park it like it's hot Nigga get an attitude Pop it like it's hot Pop it like it's hot Pop it like it's hot Got the rollie Hey there, how's it going? So, I decided to make a video today about why people miss the military and the kind of things that you can do to maybe help that person who is struggling to leave the military or has left the military and they miss it a lot. So, I'm just going to go over a few points as to maybe what you can do to help and the kind of things as to like why we miss it, uh, are you alone, things like that. So first of all, what is missing the military? It's a very broad term, missing the military, but really Missing basically means it gets to the point where it gets really, really difficult to continue with your everyday lifestyle. Uh, for myself, I was in the British military for eight years. Absolutely loved it. It was the best time of my life. Um, and I do miss it. I miss it a lot. It makes a huge uh, effect on my life. I wouldn't be where I was, was and today without uh, my military career. So, missing the military isn't just about, you know, leaving after a couple of weeks from any military career and being like, oh my god, I missed the military. Well, yeah, because you've been in the military for so long, well, you've been embedded into a military ethos and lifestyle that it's going to be really tough when you first get out. What I'm more talking about missing the military is when it becomes to the point where it's been maybe a few years and you're still really struggling with not being a part of that um, military uh, community or even just you know the career in general so you know don't get confused with being a little I say military sick and actually really truly missing your military background career friends huge list of you know things you miss but let's just talk broadly the military so don't get the two confused if you are recently just left and have just recently left the military Try your best to, um, first of all, watch this video because maybe a few things that you can take away from it. First of all, try your best to remember that it's going to take time to go into a civilian lifestyle and to transition. And they're going to tell you those kind of things and probably already have told you those kind of things when you leave the military. Um, so just be aware that this is kind of more focused towards people who have been out of the military for quite some time and are still really struggling with the way that their lives going and the way that they truly want to be a part of the military and things like that. So first of all, let's start with um, a quick background on me. As I said before, I was in the British military. I left uh, quite a few years ago and moved up to Canada, to Canada, Canada, to be with my wife. I absolutely love it here. I now have a little girl and she's beautiful and I really, really enjoy being here. Uh, I have a career and a mechanical background now. I work at uh, a plane engine building center in my city here uh, in Canada. And I really enjoy the career up until a point recently it started to get quite tedious and boring. Now that's a whole new story. My civilian lifestyle really isn't something um, I really need to discuss. That's my own problems. What I'm more focusing on is the things that I've been trying to deal with from the military and the things that I miss. So there's my background, just a quick tidbit. So let's start with, why do we miss it? Why do we miss the military so much? I mean, maybe there's people in your workplace or friends or family that you know that just constantly harp on about the army or the Navy, the Air Force, or even like the cops or even the fire service. I mean, they're kind of the same sort of uh, mentality, same kind of work ethic. Um, but for now, let's focus on the military. So why do we miss it? Let's start with the number one most important thing friends, camaraderie, and like the brotherhood. Now I know that sounds so cliche, oh yeah, your brothers, and or sisters, whatever it may be, I don't want to be you know, sexist here, but it's hard to explain, and I know it sounds cliche, and you see it all on the Halloween movies and all this sort of stuff, the brotherhood bond and all that stuff, but it's extremely difficult to, to describe until you go through that kind of process. When you go to work every day, you have friends and work colleagues who you can get along with just fine. They may be the, you know, you may class them as brothers, and that's probably real true to you if, if you feel that way. But now imagine that bond, that friendship you had with that person in your civilian career, and place you both into an environment that tests every single ounce of your, you know, mind, body, and soul to the point of breaking. Whether it be an operational deployment, um, going into combat, or even just the simplest things like being away from your friends and family for a long time and it's just a couple of you together on 
you know, an exercise or a deployment somewhere, the bond is just increased tenfold. So imagine that civilian bond you have with friends and colleagues and people you have at your workplace now, and then increase that by 10, and that's the kind of thing that people are missing in the military. That bond you don't just get anywhere. And as I said before, you do get it in other places, but I think in the military, there's a lot of instances and circumstances that can like reinforce that so much that it's just very difficult to find. And with that being said, it's very difficult to break away from, to not be a part of that anymore. Um, being in a civilian career, you really have to adjust to not just, you know, when you finish work, work's done, and now we all go home and do our own separate thing. In the military, it doesn't work like that. When work finishes, you try your best for the most part that I ever experienced, to do things outside of work. Go play soccer, go play soccer, look at me, Englishman saying soccer. Go play football, rugby, whatever it may be, you know, go for a couple of beers, and in some cases in the military, many beers. But uh, those little things, you know, they add up. The little tidbits of friendship and camaraderie, they add up and they get bigger and bigger and to the point that they make bonds and friends that you just can't replace and that is the one thing I struggle with in my everyday and I have friends that are just truly the best friends I can, can ever imagine in civilian life I couldn't ask for better but I just wish that I could bring them into the bond that I had in the military and you know reinforce that friendship even stronger and it's a huge part of why people miss the military is that comradeship and um, when you have to work sleep eat all together in the same one tight unit it just it's unreal like and like I said it is cliche and maybe you're kind of just like rolling your eyes at me right now but that's going to be one of the reasons why people tell you and I'm sure maybe they told you that before people you spoke to about it another thing for me is fitness now everybody you know goes to the gym and goes for a walk and takes a dog for walks and runs whatever and I do myself too however in the military fitness is in like it's so important to your everyday career and there's many careers that fitness obviously is important to but in the military your fitness actually will increase your chances of promotion it can increase your chances to different sporting events many different things and overall health and fitness just improves you and makes you feel better you know inside and um, for your mental and physical well-being and it's something that the military pushes you to do without choice you don't have a choice you have got to go and do fitness you've got to do it and i miss that because here i have the choice i can only be like okay i'm gonna go to bed now because i'm tired I've done however many hours of work do i need to go to the gym nah, i'm gonna go home and eat a bag of cheetos because i love cheetos but for the most part in the military you're gonna get pushed to get to the gym or go on a training session and those cheetos are gonna be out the window okay I miss that too, like fitness for me is a very big part of my life and I'm sure it's part of many of yours um, and I just miss that having to have to do something like in my career right now in civilian life it's just not apparent at all, there is no interest in real physical fitness. That's a whole new story, civilian career I chose it, I got to deal with that but I, I miss being a part of a, again, a fitness ethos you know you have to do something you want to better yourself every day because you want to be a better soldier sailor M, and whatever it may be another big part and as i just spoke on before is ethos the ethos of the military is pretty standard around every single service but for the most part it's going to be things like respect discipline integrity loyalty respect for others selfless commitment you know putting yourself uh, others before yourself all those sort of things you do obviously get in your civilian careers and in your everyday but these kind of things that I mentioned these core disciplines or these core values are pushed every day in your career in the military to make sure you do them and I miss that I miss having people who will put you before themselves in their career and outside of work too you know if I had an issue at work at my civilian career people would help you know they'd be like you know I'm gonna help you out but in the military they're gonna help you no matter what because at the end of the day later on in their career it could be something you may need to help them with and it could be life-changing whether it be an operational deployment to say Afghanistan or wherever it could change or save your life in that in that respect so 
The core values and the ethos of the military is a huge part of why people miss it too. Being hardworking, and I'm not saying that people who aren't in the military are not hardworking. What I'm saying is, is you always want to strive that little bit more no matter what to be a better soldier. I know I did. I know pretty much everyone who I worked with in the military did. There's going to be a few who don't, but whatever. At the end of the day, that's your goal, is to try and better yourself every single day. And in my career now, it just doesn't seem apparent. It seems more like everybody's very laissez-faire, just happy to just go with the flow. I enjoy being pushed beyond my limits, physically, mentally, ed educationally, to try and better myself every single day. And I just don't get that anymore. So there's a few things, and there's many other things that why people miss it. There's a few things as to why we do. So, for those of you who are watching who maybe are missing the military, are you alone? Well, obviously you're not, because I'm talking to you about it. You're not alone. There's many people I know of who are missing the military who have basically left and have completely regretted it and want to go back. There's some who have left and absolutely love uh, being out in the military, but still miss it a little bit. What I'm trying to get to, and this main audience for this is for the people like myself who really, really, it starts to affect their everyday lives. They really miss the military. Um, you're not alone. Seriously. Like, talk to people about it. For those of you who are listening to someone maybe in your workplace or in your life, friends, family, who continually go on about the military, like, just shut up. Like, you just keep going on about the military. I'm not in the military. I never was part of it. Just give them a little bit of a break. I know it's hard to listen to the military jumbo and then you know the jargon that none of you may understand or maybe you understand it you're just sick of listening to it. Just give them a bit of a break, especially if they've just left the services. It's going to be really tough for them to adjust. For those who have left for a long time, just listen. Listen to what they're saying and if after a while it's still bugging you, just be like, taking the sign like, look, I know, you know you're in the military and it's a huge part of your life, but I don't know anything really about that. It doesn't really interest me that much. So maybe we can talk about something else and you can talk about this later on. Just approach it with caution because I know of a couple of people in my life who have been really offended by people basically saying, shut the hell up. We don't want to listen to your military jargon, which is their prerogative. And that's, you know, their every right to say, but it's just, I find it really tough to deal with people like that when they're not respectful to the situation. Like I said, some people's military lifestyle was a lifestyle. It wasn't a career. It wasn't just a job. It was everything to do with what they were part of. It was their inner, inner being, you know, it's what made them tick. So just give them an ounce of respect when trying to, you know, approach the situation and tell them, you know, I may not want to listen to this too much, but maybe you could talk to this person or maybe you can outsource it this other way. Also, just try and listen. Like, if you are happy with listening to them talk about it a lot, side of break. Ooh, summons me, it's good. If they do talk about it a lot, try your best to, you know, um, ask them a couple of questions maybe and, you know, get them engaged and try and steer the conversation away from the military a little bit, trying to, you know, keep them, um, not thinking about the stressful situation about not being in the military. As I mentioned before, uh, there's going to be military sickness, kind of like homesickness, and long-term military missing, like the urge to be a part of that system again. Some people have difficulties returning to a military career, understandably. It's not as simple as just, you know, well, I made the wrong mistake, let's go back. Sometimes you just can't do that. Uh, you may be medically downgraded, you may be physically unfit to be able to participate anymore. You may be a little bit too old. You may be want to do the particular career or job that you used to do, but this is not available anymore. So these are other things that you need to take into account when you hear people talking about, you know, I regret it and I wish I really want to be back in. And then you all of a sudden say, well, just go back then. It's just not quite as simple as that. However, there are many ways that you can assist yourself and assist the people dealing with this kind of stress. There are many avenues that you can go down. For myself, I'm trying my best to get into the reserves, the Canadian Military Reserves. I think it's going to take a huge burden off my shoulders. It's going to take a, 
a massive lump out of my throat and the worry of not being part of that military system anymore. So maybe that's something you can look at doing, try and being a part of a military reserve system. Um, maybe part of the army cadets. As again, something I'm looking into doing is maybe uh, teaching um, young cadets who aspire to be soldiers or airmen or sailors or whoever to be what they want to be, you know? And that's a huge reward in itself, getting other people to try something that you did. Maybe you can't get back to that old career but it's something you can aspire others to do. And that's really, really cool if you're able to do that. And something myself personally, I'm trying to do. So again, some other advice you can give others to uh, maybe alleviate some of that stress. Another thing is talk to people about it. Talk to your friends, talk to your family. If you're stressing out about it, if you're talking to people and they're not listening, try your best to um, maybe approach it a little differently don't just say straight away oh my god i'm missing the military and blah 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 just say hey look like um things have been a little tough for me lately i'm just wondering if we could talk about it don't go straight to the military it could be a, a culmination of other things that you think is the military but it's not just quite and that's definitely something for me too is i think i put a lot of stress on myself being away from the military but i think there's a lot more than just the military going on there the key thing you need to ask yourself is if you're, uh, if you're struggling with being away from the military is does it affect your everyday livelihood, the way you live? If it does, like if it's affecting things like for myself, I don't enjoy doing the things I used to do, I get stressed real quick, I get angry at the simplest of things, I'm tired a lot, I constantly think in the day about military things, I say military jargon all day, whether it be, you know, I don't know, abbreviations for stuff or the phonetic alphabet. You know, I was having a phone conversation the other day with an insurance company and she thought I was calling out an artillery women fire control order. She's listening all to these phonetic alphabets and numbers and she's just like, what is that? So, you know, you've got to make sure that you ask yourself first, not what other people think of what the, your problem is. Ask yourself, is it something that's really, really affecting my life? Am I sad? Do I feel depressed? And depression is a whole new conversation. I'm not going to get onto it. But for myself, I do deal with a little bit of depression because of my missing a military career. And it's something you need to talk to someone about. You have, again, many other ways of talking to people out, your doctor and things like that. But ask yourself that question. Is it really affecting my livelihood? Or is it just something that's nitpicking here and there and I can still get on with my life and enjoy things and be happy and my career is still good? So there's going to be, like I said, that settling in period from leaving the military. So just take that into mind. Also, ask what your friends and family think of you missing it. You know, do they think that it's possibly affecting your livelihood? Maybe you don't think it is. But if people keep coming up to you and saying, hey, like, you're really stressed, like, you, you know, what's going on? Is it something to do with your military past or whatever? Now, that's a whole new ball game. I'm talking about, like, maybe post-traumatic stress disorder or other issues that may have continued on in the military. But if they're asking you things like, you know, you talk about the military, are you missing it? No, are you missing being in the military? And, you know, all those sort of questions. If people keep asking you that, maybe that's another telltale sign that something is awry you know maybe something's a little stressing you out from being away from it something else you need to ask yourself is do you regret leaving now this is a tough one for me because everybody has their own respect on how their own sorry perspective of how they deal with regret for my part i don't regret leaving the military when i make a choice i stick to it again very cliche but I try my best to stick to what I chose to do and roll with it. And as of recently, I am really happy that I got out because I was able to start my family with my little girl. So, and I probably could have done it in the military too. You just gotta think about the decision you make at the time when you decide to leave the military. You made it for a reason. Whatever that reason may be, try your best to move on, you know, and to move forward with your life. There are other avenues you can do. You can always go back. There is always that choice to go back. If you can't, like I said, look at other avenues, look at other ways of doing it. Don't tr try your best not to regret anything because it's just going to eat you up inside. Stick to your guns and make sure you're happy with the decision you're in. Another thing that can affect missing the military, and there's a really cool video and I'll link it in the description below. It's a TED Talks, and I love TED Talks. I think they're fantastic. Um, thumbs up, TED Talks. But 
you've got to remember that operational tours are very, very difficult on servicemen and women. There's a lot of experiences going on there. The big thing for me from that TED talk that I watched was basically why veterans miss combat operations and operational tours. For instance, say example, Afghanistan. There's a lot of things that are going to happen and you'll experience and you have experienced on operational tours that you're going to miss. It could be as simple as a lot of cash. You can get a lot of extra money when you're on operational deployments. You know, there's danger pay, all that good stuff. That could be something you miss. You could miss the combat. You could miss the even more enhanced camaraderie you get with the platoon or guys that you're working with. These are all things, again, that people need to take into consideration as to why veterans feel the way they do about missing the military. It's enhanced tenfold when it comes to operational tours. People who have been on operational tours or even seen, uh, sorry, experienced activities within the military, extremely stressful and demanding, that is a big factor in determining why someone misses the military. You know, they could have helped stop a flood. You know, in the British military, any military, there's always um, floods uh, happening somewhere in the world and they may be called in to help. And that can be a huge sense of pride and rewarding nature for some people, you know, it makes them feel like they've done something special. You go to any other real career in civilian life and apart from the obvious ones, you're not really gonna have those kind of opportunities to really truly make yourself proud of what you're doing. Again, with operational tours, you're doing something for your country, your people, your friends, family, you're looking out for others, you're helping maybe other communities, whether they may, uh, whether they may be in disarray or stress or you know, conflict, whatever it may be. And there are other things that can affect people missing the military. And that's, a, again, another really difficult conversation and a whole new topic. But something to take into consideration is maybe you do miss combat. It's a fact. It may be something that you are into. The TED Talks video explains it quite clearly as to why, and it pretty much goes back to what I said before with the brotherhood and the camaraderie. So, overall, this video is pretty much based and focused for people who are truly missing the military. My advice is, listen to those alarm bells ring. If they're ringing, and you're stressing out so much about not being in the military much that it's bugging your life and affecting your life, talk to someone. Listen to people who are talking about it to those of you around those people. Respect their thoughts and their decision to leave and their decisions to maybe rejoin and try and guide them in a direction that can benefit them. Please don't try and block them out. Don't be rude. Ask them questions. Don't ask the stupid questions. I'm not going to ask you, but it involves deceased. I'm not going to say any more. Just, you know, respect the fact that these people are struggling with something and that it's not just a career. It's not just a job. It's a lifestyle. And it, when people realize that it is more than just a job and a career, that's when the people who are struggling are able to, you know, be more approached. You can talk to them better. So I'm hoping that maybe the people who are watching this who do miss the military take something from it. I'm going to have another cider break because that was quite a long chat. Ooh, some is good. They're good. Hopefully, you've got something out of this. Whether it be, you know, I'm not alone. I'm not the only person thinking about these things. It may be, you know, there's someone I know who's been really stressed lately in Bingo, that's it. That's what he's probably stressing out about. Talk to them about it. I just put this video out there to try and make people aware and the people who are maybe struggling with it aware that you're not alone. There's things you can do to help these things. There are things that, you know, these are the reasons probably as to why you miss it. And to talk to people about it. Make sure that you're not stressing out so much that it's affecting your livelihood and your life because no one likes stress and we only have one life and we want to live it happy. So myself, I am trying my best to aim high and look forward and I miss the military so much, but I'm finding ways to deal with it. So find your own way of dealing with it, you know? If you do feel like you need to talk to someone, I'm right here if you want to talk to me. Um, post comments below or feel free to contact me. This channel is normally a gaming channel and it's a really, really bad one. 
Um, I'm not really too good at making gaming channels right now, so I'm thinking maybe I'm going to start making kind of more videos like this where I discuss like maybe you want to join the military, maybe you're thinking of leaving the military, maybe you're thinking of a particular trade you want to get into. Being in my military career, I came across pretty much every single trade in the, the British Army anyway, but I'm sure I can give an insight into many other uh, nations, military forces. Unfortunately, not the Navy and the Air Force, but you never know, I can still give you a little bit, tidbits of advice. But uh, thank you for watching. Remember, if you are dealing with things like this and you are stressed about leaving the military, talk to someone. Don't stress out about it. Live happy. You're low, well, that's sort of junk. You only live once. And yeah, stay positive. Look forward. If you do want to be back in the military, go down those avenues you can do to do it. And if you don't and still struggling with it, there's many other things you can do. And come talk to me or leave comments to ask what I'm trying to do to, to help myself and benefit myself from that. And apart from that, I really, really appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you'll watch another one. I'm going to probably post maybe a couple more videos up coming up real soon on maybe like joining the military or thinking of leaving the military. Um, operational tour stresses, you know, dealing with um, certain post-traumatic stress disorder problems. That's a really tough subject to touch on, but I'm just going to talk about it from my own experiences. But there are just a few videos I'm going to bring up uh, real soon here. So if you do like my video, hopefully you do. If you don't, I apologize. It's pretty lame. But um, like and subscribe. Post comments in the comments box below. And remember, watch that TED Talks video, because it is really cool and it's really eye-opening. And the guy in there is just like unreal. Like as a reporter, he'd be a fantastic reporter to have attached to any unit. Thanks again, and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Ooh, side of break.